hello everyone welcome to my channel today in this video i'll try to cover how to install vcenter server and i'll also try to discuss about what are the features that are part of 7.0 so that will be our today's agenda so uh, new features in vc 7.0 and uh, the vc fresh installation so in 7.0 you can perform vc installation in three ways one is you have you can use the cli installer which is the command line utility then next one is the use user interface through ui we have a ui installer for that you have to launch it and provide the input for that and next one is using the api so in this video i'll try to cover only the cli part and moving on to first let's discuss what are the new features or the main features that are part of 7.0 so in the vsphere 7.4 one of the major feature that we have is vSphere with Kubernetes, which is formerly called as project specific. So using this, you can enable Kubernetes on your vSphere cluster. In the other way, you can create the TKG cluster. You can create the control plane VMs, nodes, and everything. And next, you do have the improved uh, DRS distributed resource scheduler. And next, moving on to that uh, vSphere lifecycle manager, which is one of the other features you have it refactored vmotion and intrinsic security and there are many more which are part of 7.4 so one of the other thing which should be known is um, from 7.4 your psc cannot be on the external in the sense let's say if you have a vcenter server 6.7 having external psc psc on one mission and your vc on other mission when you try to upgrade from 6.7 to 7.0 it becomes embedded and there is a separate processor for that which is documented so now we will move on to download the 7.0 vc build and start with the installation and to download you uh, download the build you can go to myvmware.com and under download session you can find the specified version you wanted 7.0 and here we will be uh, performing vcenter server installation so let's click on go to downloads okay now the version we wanted is 7.0 so select the 7.0 and then you here is the build you can just down click download uh, now for that you should log in after that if you're privileged you, are, you can download it or you can even download it for free trial so before start of this video i've already downloaded the build and i've extracted it and we'll take a look on that now here is the build and i've downloaded and i've extracted it so once you go inside the folder you see a lot of directories in it and i'll just go through what is one by one and vcsa ui install is something if you wanted to perform the installation upgrade or migration you can go into this folder and you will have an installer uh, you can select what os you wanted whether it is windows mac or linux according let's say from part of windows i'll open this and you can launch the installers in this video we're not going to use this ui installer of performing the fresh installation so we'll go with cli and you have the cli folder in this you can click on this here you see uh, other directories where it says like what OS is this you are using it depending on that you should go let's say if you're on win 32 you should go in this and you will have the vcsa deploy script which takes care of entire uh, fresh installation upgrade or migration so previous to this you see other directory in this which is called templates so uh, we need to for the cli we should first fill a json which is being predefined in this and we should fill the json with all the details and give that json as input to the vcsa deploy script so now uh, i'm inside vcsa cli installer i'm going into the template directory and then in templates you see install migrate upgrade there are three areas where uh, we can perform using the cli installer so in this video we will be covering about install so in this while installing you have like four ways we can install one is uh, you can install it on esxi you can install on the vc the other one is you can use the replication so now i'll go with installation on bare esxi so let me open this json json name is embedded it means embedded vcsa on esxi it means let me explain you here embedded is nothing but it means to say your vc and psc are on the same mission and the, which is a vcsa installation on 
the ESXi. So I'll be going with this. So I've opened the JSON file. In the JSON, the JSON initially looks like this, like where it has the version, what version of template is that, and it says, uh, on the comments, you can see sample template to deploy a vCenter server appliance with an embedded platform service controller on an ESXi host. So it is saying clearly that it is deploying on the ESXi. And before uh, we move ahead, we should fill all the all these inputs and then we should give this input to the VCSA deploy script that perform the installation. Prior to that, let us fill this one. So before the uh, start of this, I have a SXA where I have to deploy my VC. So I'll give the details over here and I'll provide everything. So my SXA one minute. Okay, here is my SXA host name, whether it can be IP or FQDN, I provided it. And the user should be root and the password for that and then what on in which network you wanted to deploy the uh, vc and the network name on what is a data store you wanted to use here and provided that and after that whether you wanted to use the thin disk mode or not if it is if you don't want to use it make this as false but uh, uh this way but i'll go with the true as of now because i wanted to deploy a uh, thin disk mode and deployment options in deployment options you have three small medium large so depending on the uh, year infrastructure requirement you can uh, choose one the way you wanted to deploy so in for this demo i'll go with the small and what is the name of the vcvm that it is going to deploy so i'm just giving it hyphen cli and moving on to the network here if you uh, i as of now i'm going with ipv4 deployment if it is ipv6 you can select ipv6 here but let's go with ipv4 and the mode if it is static you you want to fill all these things when i say all these things i mean to say fqdn the system name you should provide what if what name it has to be and what is ip and what is the prefix and what is the dns server here in this video i'll go with the dhcp if i select the dhcp we need not to fill all these things because my dhcp server will provide what is the ip and what is the fqdn for that and what is the prefix and what is the gateway and eventually it even gives me what is the dns server so i'm not going to fill anything my dhcp server is going to do that and next one here the password what is the password uh, you wanted to set let's remove this and let's say here is the password something you have to set and then yeah time server and you you, you can provide the time server of your infrastructure and next enable ssh make it true and next session is sso after os now we are done with os we're moving on to sso in sso you should provide the password for the sso like uh, you log in with administrator at the redvspeed.local right that's the password we're going to give it here and now and the domain is like you, you can even change to test or anything but let's go with the default one for this video and i've selected this and yeah that's all CAP. this is one it says and i wanted CAP enabled to be true if i enable this all my data gets forwarded to the analytics so now i filled the template and i'll go to the cli folder and in this i'll select the win32 in win32 we will just type the cmd and we'll get the prompt open like this and here uh, as, as I told you earlier, we have a script VCSA deploy and that takes care of everything. And here it is VCSA deploy, just give tab, use your dot exe. And now, and what action you want to perform, whether you want to perform install, if it is install, you should give install. Or if you wanted to do an upgrade, you should give upgrade. If you wanted to give perform migration, you should give migrate. So in this, we will go with install and now provide the path of the JSON file where we have created it. So I have provided the JSON file path and we should accept EULA and we should also acknowledge the CEIP. And now, the, so this is one, 
you have to uh, give what the exe file you wanted it and what action it has to perform it has to install and what is input for that this is a json file input and here accept eula we should accept the eula and acknowledge the ceip and i'll click on the install it has asked me for an acceptance and i accepted it here and now it is performing few pre-checks so it has run a couple of pre-checks here and now it has started the OEF deployment and you see the OEF deployment is 7% completed and we'll wait for it to totally complete and see what happens next. OEF deployment is completed and you see here the task completed and next it will try to power on the VM and get done IP. I'll show you how it looks from the ESXi here. And this is my ESXi you see and I have this VM getting deployed here. It's in power on state. And we'll quickly see what is the status here. Yep, still not yet. So after this, what happens is it tries to run and uh, post OEO deployment checks, pre kind of a pre-checks and then it runs the first boot and then your server will be ready. and so i would ideally say after this you need not to uh, monitor this once that is completed i'll show you how it looks like so the vc installation is completed and now i'll log into the vc using the ip that i got it here and i logged into the vc using administrator vspray.local and this is my vc and this is the ip i got it and i'll try to create a data center this I'll have uh, a cluster so here at the time of creation of cluster if you wanted to have the DRS enabled you can select this if you want to enable HA you can select the DRS you can select it so as of now I just wanted to create a dummy cluster uh, I don't mean a dummy actually what I mean is without any such options I'm going to create it and now I'll add my ESXA if you wanted to uh, add anything I can add ESXA by providing the IP here some like 50 some all of those things and can click on next it tries to add it so with this we are able to uh, install vCenter server 7.4 through CLI and we are even able to create basic inventory thank you